Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining in to the first part of the um, SAC interview series. Uh, the first guest that we have is Ross Albers. He is a men's lacrosse alum of the class of 2005. He graduated uh, with a degree in business management and then moved on to law school where he graduated from the University of Baltimore School of Law with a concentration in criminal practice. Uh, he moved on from law school um, and left the Travelers Insur Insurance uh, Special Liability Group and transitioned to the Baltimore City State's Attorney Office where he focused on criminal, DUI, juvenile, and traffic cases. From there, Ross decided to create his own legal practice, Albers & Associates, where he used his own past experiences to give, uh, give people a more focused defense as Maryland law continues to change with the times. Albers & Associates has evolved to include numerous attorneys throughout their four locations in Maryland, where they represent clients in the Maryland DUI, DWI, personal injury, injury and criminal matters throughout the state. Um, in 2016 and 17, Mr. Albers was awarded the Maryland Super Lawyers Rising Star Award in criminal defense uh, for DUIs. So thank you for taking, uh, taking time to speak with us today, uh, Mr. Albers, and really appreciate it. <laughs> All right, to start it off, um, I wanted to ask you, um, what was your specific Bucknell experience like and what did it teach you? Yeah, sure, I would say uh, my specific experience was I, I showed up on campus on the first day and I immediately had 40 friends because I was a part of a team. And for me, the specific experience was that the transition from high school to college was easier knowing that I was coming in and I had 40 guys that were going to embrace me as a team member and people I could rely on and upperclassmen who could help us out. And so my specific experience was very much involved around the lacrosse program and the team. I'm sure like most of you, uh, your best friends are on the swim team or on the lacrosse team and because those are the people you're spending almost all of your time with while you're at Bucknell. And so for me, the specific experience was day one I showed up and I already had a, a group of people that I knew were gonna be my friends. And so that really helped with the transition. Great, great. Um, and then what do you believe are the most applicable skills you've learned at Bucknell, whether it be academics or athletics uh, that have helped you to navigate graduate school in the professional world? Sure, so like many of you, I'm sure you guys in high school were probably uh, two of the best swimmers on your high school swim team, right? And I was one of the best, if not the best lacrosse player on my high school team. And I showed up to Bucknell and everybody on the lacrosse team was the best player on their high school team. Or if they weren't the best player on their high school team, they would have been the best player on my high school team, uh, better than me. And I'm sure many athletes in college experience that. And I learned quickly that maybe I wasn't as good as I thought I was. And I think going into the real world, it really stressed on me the importance of how much harder I had to now work in order to keep up with people on the lacrosse team that were better lacrosse players, better athletes than me. And I'm, I'm sure you have had similar experiences as well where you showed up and holy man, that guy next to me is faster than I am, right? Uh, and so it taught me the idea of hard work, uh, the, the idea of that, you're not always gonna be the smartest person in the room or the best person in the room, but you can level the playing field if you're willing to outwork the other people in that room. And if you are, I don't care how talented they are, how much better of an athlete they are, your hard work will beat them nine times out of 10 because a lot of times the best athletes, the best people in the professional world are not always the hardest workers. And for me, that really taught me that I had to, uh, when I got into the professional world, continue to be one of the hardest workers because I always wasn't going to be the smartest person in the business world. Great. Um, and then what are a few things that you wish you did during your time at Bucknell? I wish I had built better relationships with my professors. I can't think of any professor now uh, now that I've been out of school for 15 years that I'm still really in touch with or have a relationship with or reach back out to. And for me, I wish I had spent more time focusing on building relationships with certain professors who I could go back to the school and, and meet with and rely on and reach out to. And, and I didn't do a good job with that. And so I would encourage people at Bucknell 
uh, find that professor that you click with or you really like um, and build a relationship with them and, and try to have one outside of school once you graduate. Thanks. And, and basing the next question off of what you just said, um, what are a few things that you wish you knew in regard to entering the real world after college? Like with these ideas in mind, how do you best encourage student athletes to try to understand these things prior to graduation and use them in the real world? So I'll give you an example. Uh, the transition from college life to professional life is very hard. Uh, you're a 22 year old kid joining a fortune 500 company and the person at the desk next to you has been there for 20 years, right? And there's a certain level of maturity and professionalism that they have acquired over time that you don't have yet. And the days of sort of, you know, being at Bucknell, enjoying your time, running around, being on the swim team, having fun with friends, those, that continues later on in life. But you got to understand you're entering a professional business where the guy next to you has been there for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. And so to me, something I lacked and wish I had known back then is that there's just a certain level of maturity that you need to have when you enter the business world. Um, it's not like college. And I think if you understand that there is a big difference between the two, you'll be far more successful. I can still remember the day I moved to Baltimore after I graduated from Bucknell and I went home to pack up my stuff and my dad handed me my social security card, my passport and my birth certificate and told me it was a pleasure doing business with you. I was, I was on my own. I had all my official documents in life and now I was on my own. And I remember that first day living in Baltimore, trying to figure out what I was going to make for dinner that night because there's no cafeteria to go to that's going to feed you, right? Like you got to make dinner. Right. And I could make spaghetti for like the first week because that's all I knew how to make. And so it's a hard transition to go from, you know, living in that bubble at Bucknell where everything's really provided for you and there's a lot of structure to being out on your own. And now like you got to fend for yourself. And um, it's, that was hard. Uh, and so for me, I think there's just a level of maturity that I lacked that I wish I had known going into it. Someone had told me, listen, the people you're working with have been there for a long time and they're going to expect a certain level of professionalism and maturity out of you. Um, and you can't act like a 22 year old college kid anymore. You've got to start acting uh, more like an adult. Um, and so for me, I think these leadership conferences and things that you guys do, it's a good opportunity for folks like me to come in and express that to you, how important it is. Right, uh, what advice do you have for student athletes when going through the job search and hiring process? So I'll tell you, there's three characteristics that I look for when I'm considering hiring somebody. And it's not how great of a lawyer or paralegal they are. I'm looking for people that are humble, hungry, and smart. And I don't mean smart in the intelligence sense. I mean emotionally intelligent. They know how to relate with, with other people. They know how the things they say and do affect other people on the team. And so I'm looking for the ideal team player, someone who's humble, somebody who doesn't take credit for everything, uh, someone who gives credit to other members on the team, hungry, someone who's willing to go the extra mile, who does not just look at it as a nine to five job, but is willing to you know, do work on the weekends, who's willing to step in and maybe do activities or tasks that are not necessarily their job description, but know will help out the team. And then smart being able to get along with everyone. And if I was a Bucknell student right now interviewing for a job, I would make sure that I would express to whoever's interviewing me that I am humble, hungry, and smart. And to me, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, and I wish someone had told me when I was at Bucknell, express those qualities and you will get every job you interview and apply for, they will offer you a job if you're humble, hungry, and smart. Um, but keep in mind too, uh, you know, you really have to understand those concepts. You want to be a team player. You want to be somebody who knows what they want in life and is going to go after and get it. And you also know how to work with other people as well. Um, it's not about what your GPA was. Uh, it's not about what degrees you got at the end of the day is it are you a team player and I think being a student athlete at Bucknell that gives you an advantage um, so one of the big things that I noticed from your resume when um, Jen Cantera reached out to me was that you started your own legal legal firm after be after working for the bubble the, uh, in Baltimore City 
So what has starting your own legal firm taught you and how did you overcome those failures and push through to be successful today? And I think this pertains to a lot of student athletes who may want to embark on own, their own business ventures down the line or, you know, work in the professional world and then start their own practice, um, whether it be medical, uh, in the law, law or anything else. Sure. I've, I've, it takes courage, right? You got to have courage and you've got to be willing to bet on yourself. And for me, starting my own business, I had the, you know, I came home two weeks before I got married and told my wife I was getting fired from the, the job I was at, but don't worry, I'm going to start my own law practice and business and took courage to tell my wife that uh, before we even married. But starting your own business takes courage. It's the, it's the ability to bet on yourself and you know, trust that you're gonna be humble, hungry, and smart yourself. And I also learned that starting your own business means you're a business owner. And there's a difference between working on your business and working in your business, right? So I own a law firm. I don't practice law anymore. I run the law firm because I don't have time to be the attorney. Now, I, it gave me confidence to be like, man, I'm playing with some of the, I'm competing against some of the best athletes in the world, same as you are on the swim team. You know, I can do this. And I know that I spent four years trying to make that team every single year. Uh, I can bet on myself here too. I would say, again, it's the, it's the courage to go out and, and start your own business. And I think being an, an athlete at Bucknell teaches you to have courage because every year the freshman class is bigger, stronger, and faster than you are. And on the swim team, they're posting faster times than you are. And so in business every day, I, I had to know that I had to have the courage and knowing that I made the team every year and knowing what type of work I had to put in to do that, uh, I think that translated into deciding to open your own business. Because who I, I heard Mark Cuban say recently that you know, owning a business is, is 24 seven and everyone's trying to kick your ass. Well, guess what? Being on the swim team at Bucknell is 24 seven and everyone's trying to kick your ass. Same thing for the lacrosse team. Everyone's trying to take your spot. And so to me, that experience of being an athlete trained me to know that I've got to be competitive um, going out there and starting my own business. Um, and finally, uh, what's the most important life lesson anyone has ever taught you? I would, I would kind of attribute this to my parents, to a business coach that I've been working with. Um, and I would say it's not one life lesson, but it's something that I've kind of tied into my own motto and something that I'm trying to teach my two daughters and I'll have a third one on the way. But my experience at Bucknell, my experience in the professional world, and now my experience owning my own business, uh, the, the biggest life lesson I've learned is to dream big, take action, and be relentless. And to me, that's the greatest life, life lesson I've learned um, in the past probably 15, 10 years of running my own business and, and being a member of the lacrosse team. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. You got it. I hope that I hope it all came through. <laughs>